What is that? We'll talk about it. Your forecast across the Caribbean and the Bahamas starts right now. This is Meteo Mundo. Hi friends, Rusty back with you here at Media Mundo on this Friday, April the 19th. I hope you're having a great day coming up. We're going to talk about some heavy rainfall in portions of our area occurring right now. We'll forecast. I'm going to take you island by island. We'll look over the three-day rainfall in your area and then much more about that area in the Atlantic that I just showed you to start off this video. As we get started, of course, you have a specific question about the forecast, drop it in the comments section below. I'm happy to answer those questions. And while you're there, thank you so much for hitting the like button as well. So let's get into what's happening on the here and now on this Friday afternoon. We do have some heavy rain for portions of the Windward Islands, especially Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, portions of St. Vincent in the Grenadines, and Barbados. We have ample moisture beginning to move in. You can see the flare up of the thicker cloud coverage right now on our visible satellite imagery. I'm going to move over to the infrared imagery and you can see the blow up of that moisture. Now, as we speak on this late Friday afternoon, another round of heavier rain is moving over Trinidad. Get a try and lift north towards Tobago. Grenada could see some of this heavier rain as well. There is the potential for some flash flooding in these island locations. So just be very cautious. Watch out for some quick, heavy rainfall producing some of that localized flooding through the rest of this Friday afternoon for the areas that I've just mentioned. Again, a lot of moisture coming in. Now, Barbados has seen some areas of excessive rain. It looks like at this point in time, some of the heaviest moisture is moving just east of the island. But that doesn't mean that we won't get another round moving in. And that could be true for places like Martinique and St. Lucia, uh, St. Lucia. And as I've already mentioned, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and in Grenada as well. Well, just very moisture laden air coming out of the south right now that has produced some heavier rainfall. The rain chances and the heavier rain will taper off starting tomorrow and I'll have much more on that as well. Let's get back over to the visible satellite imagery because it's not just area, this area that continues to see some heavier rain. It's some of the same locations we've been talking about all week long. Nice little blow up of clouds and some opportunity for some rain right now in portions of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. It's a little bit more spotty on this Friday, but again, we've had some river flooding on the western side of Puerto Rico and the potential for enough rain over the next few days for at least some isolated flooding, some landslides, some mudslides are all still a possibility. Now, again, the heavy rain and the widespread rain has come down a little bit from the last few days, but this is still an area that is going to be relatively wet through the weekend. Hispaniola is the same situation. We continue to see a flare up. There's just a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. There's a trough across this area leading to more instability. We've even had some thunderstorm activity. Right now, some of the heaviest rain is falling on the southwest side of Haiti towards Lakai. So both Haiti and the Dominican Republic getting in on this and again, scattered showers will continue to develop. I think the best chance for heavier rain will be inland, but again, very high terrain island, uh, landslide, mudslide issues could be a possibility here with soil that is already very wet from all the rain that they've seen during the week. My friends in Jamaica, you guys let me know you had some good rain yesterday and I'm really glad to hear that. We continue to see the opportunity for at least a few scattered showers as we move through this Friday afternoon. I'm going to switch on over to the temperatures here. And again, at this point in time, Kingston's still right around 90 degrees, not indicative of seeing some rain in the area, but we've had some cloud coverage develop here and the opportunity for a few showers today. But later into the weekend, we are going to have a better chance for some rain in Jamaica. Elsewhere, we're looking high and dry for the Cayman Islands through most of Central America, including Belize and Guatemala and Honduras, Cancun and Cozumel. It's absolutely gorgeous. You want to talk about some five-star weather. The great weather continues for my friends in the Bahamas. Enjoy it. Freeport, Lucaya, West End, right around 84 daytime high. Same thing for Nassau. Turks and Caicos looking pretty good as well. And again, you can see that the temperature there in Port of Spain there in Trinidad has dropped back down. We lost the sensor there for a second, but when it was on, it was about 85 degrees. And again, looks like we've had maybe the potential for a little bit of rain drifting over St. Kitts and Nevis as well. You can see their temperature dropping back down to 81, all very indicative of the potential for some showers there. 
It's going to be a little bit more spotty in the Leeward Islands for today, but it's out there. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is get into the situation that I showed you going on in the Atlantic. Now, this is the system that pulled away from the Greater Antilles over the last couple of days. Now, what's very interesting about this is, first of all, and uh, let me just make sure I loop this up correctly here over the next five days. The first thing is, the last time I was on, we talked about how this had a little bit of rotation to it, how there was some vorticity, okay? But the fact that this is going to slam on the brakes and try and work its way back south and west is extremely unusual for late April. There is a ridge of high pressure trying to build into the north, but the fact that this holds together, and it's not just in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, because obviously when you're talking about, you know, the tropics in the Atlantic, you got to have a warm cord system, and there's got to be circulation at the bottom, right, at the surface. Now, the circulation at the surface is not crazy strong, but take a look at this. This is 100 meter winds, okay? So winds about 300 feet up, 100 meters, high in the atmosphere. And you can still very clearly see this rotation, this spin, gusty winds. Now, if there's a good piece of news, I'm showing you the next five days where it slams on the brakes in the middle of the Atlantic and then pushes back south and west. The good news is, and I'm going to absolutely show you guys this, when I extend this out another, let's say, three days, and it might take a second for the model to load on days six, seven, and eight, so bear with me, we do begin to see this fizzle out. Okay, so again, this is nothing to concern yourself with, except for the fact that this is extremely unusual for late April to already see this system try and come back from west to east. Typically, we'd still have our mid-latitude cyclones, our cold cord systems in the central and the northern Atlantic, especially coming off of the east coast of the United States. But the fact that we have one as trying to slam on the brakes still stay somewhat wrapped up and then actually try and push back closer to our area is very unusual. It's going to be a big, broad area of wind that could eventually hit Bermuda. But again, is it going to become tropical? No. Is it going to directly impact our area? No, but it is a crazy unusual feature for this time of the year to see that in the open waters of the Atlantic. One reason why it might be suppressed a little bit is again, it'll be on the south side impinged with the Saharan dust layer. And that's one of the things at places like Trinidad and Tobago and a lot of the wind we're in Leeward Islands is dealing with right now. We're starting to get more haze developing to go along with some of that heavier rain. So it's crazy. And again, we can take a look at here and let me just get back over to the next uh, five days. We don't wanna go too far out in the rain here, but uh, by the way, as I'm doing this, Again, thank you for clicking the like button. If you haven't subscribed to Media Mundo, I got you covered. This is no hype forecast, but it's just very unusual. And you can clearly see at the surface here on the model, this very broad spin, you can almost see banding features. Again, it's, it's not wrapping up into anything, but I've been doing this for a long time, guys. Growing up in Florida, tropical weather, and um, you know, this is something that I would not expect to see in late April. So there you go. So let's get back into how this is going to play out. Now, the first thing I want to do before we look at the island by island rain chances, I do want to talk about here the rainfall outlook over the next 30 days. I'm going to take myself off camera. I've shown you this recently as well. So basically, this is from mid-April to mid-May. You see a lot of greens and blues on the map. We are in store for what's going to be a wet month here coming up, mid-April through mid-May, especially the Leeward Islands, portions of the Greater Antilles, including Jamaica, drier as you get towards the Yucatan and Cuba and the Bahamas, and maybe back down towards the Windward Islands as well. But from Barbados north, especially places like Anguilla and St. Kitts and Nevis, and the U.S. and the British Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic, and portions of Jamaica, you're looking at anywhere from 10 to 20 millimeters of rain above what you would typically see over the next 30 days, to maybe even 75 to close to 100 millimeters above what you would typically see over the next 30 days. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to get excessive heavier rainfall each and every day. It just means that when we total it up over the next 30 days, a lot of us will be above average. And I'm telling you right now, part of that is that we're gonna to start to see more moisture coming back in from the Western Atlantic. So let's talk about how this is gonna play out 
over the next five days. For Trinidad and Tobago and Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the best chance for heavy rain is today. We will still see the opportunity for some scattered showers over the weekend. They could still produce some heavy rainfall, but the concentration of heaviest rain is going to be for the remainder of this Friday. So just showing that again, this is as we go through the afternoon hours. Again, the model just shows that spotty moisture continuing to move up. We could have some rain redevelop overnight into tomorrow afternoon and then kind of fade away slightly where the rain chances come down a little bit, but you can still see there's a slug of moisture in play uh, for the rest of the islands as well. Barbados included in that, St. Lucia and Martinique and Dominica. I think you get as far north as Dominica, we start to see this uh, become a little bit more spotty in nature. Guadeloupe and Antigua and Barbuda and uh, St. Uh, Bartholomew and Saba, all with isolated rain chances over the weekend, early next week, but fairly dry, many dry hours and locations in most of these areas. It does turn wetter for the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. And I've already mentioned the wet weather and the potential flooding potential in Puerto Rico itself. So just kind of taking a look at this area, St. Croix looking okay, St. Thomas, St. John, Tortola, isolated rain there. Uh, it looks like it'll be a little bit farther west is what I'm trying to get at here. And again, we'll just take a look at the model here over the next five days. So showers redeveloping this afternoon, mainly inland, mainly on the western side of the island kind of spotty rain over the next five days. It's a lower chance, no doubt about it, between now and early next week compared to all of this week. But that being said, I do expect rain in Puerto Rico each and every day over at least the next five days. We just kind of stay relatively wet. And of course, the soil is wet and saturated in some spots. Additional isolated flooding is a possibility. I think it's going to be a little bit wetter for Hispaniola. We're going to continue to see some rain develop. Again, we have some lift in the atmosphere. We have some moisture to play with. So for Punta Cana and Santo Domingo, scattered showers will continue inland towards Santiago de los Caballeros and Puerto Plata to the north there. The opportunity for some rain, and even Haiti gets in on the act as well from Fort au Prince on over towards Lakai, scattered rain. We could get a couple of maximums of rain. I, we're certainly some rain out there right now. The model then tries to redevelop a little bit more heavier rain. Let me sure, make sure I get back out to it here on Saturday, tomorrow, the 20th. You can see a little bit more rain there. Might come down a little bit on Sunday, might be slightly drier, and then Late next week, as we get into Monday and Tuesday, additional heavier rain developing inland. And again, because we're talking about a very mountainous island, anything that falls in some of the higher terrain, some isolated mudslides and landslides could be an issue. For my friends in Jamaica, again, great to hear that you got some good rain across portions of the island yesterday. I think it's very isolated today and tomorrow, slightly at a better chance for some showers on Sunday. No day is gonna be completely dry. Uh, but hopefully we'll concentrate a little bit more rain Sunday. And then as you can see, a few isolated showers popping up both on Monday and Tuesday. I'll keep an eye on it for Kingston and Montego Bay and the Grill and all my friends in Jamaica. Uh, still though, again, Kingston, you know, low 30s centigrade for highs. Feels like temperatures Fahrenheit pushing 100 degrees. It's steamy out there. And again, generally speaking, when we get this far north and west in the Caribbean, our moisture is a little bit more limited. We do see a few showers coming off of the West Haitian coastline trying to sneak over uh, towards Jamaica. But generally speaking, for then, sorry, I went a little bit too far there. It tends to happen with this mouth sometimes. Uh, generally speaking, for then the Cayman Islands and Cancun and Cozumel, Belize City and Roatan, St. Pedro Sula, We'll get some pockets of rain along the immediate coast. I don't think San Ignacio is gonna get a lot of rain. Temperatures there will be in the mid 90s for highs along the coastline for San Pedro and Belize City there in Belize, it'll be in the upper 80s. For my friends in the Bahamas, and again, one of the things, if you don't hear me talk about you too much, it means your weather's gonna be beautiful. We're looking really good here, especially over the weekend. Enjoy it for our friends in Walker's Key and Freeport, and Nassau, Arthurstown and Georgetown. We will have another front coming in early to mid next week with again the opportunity for a couple of showers in the northwest bahamas i'll be monitoring that situation for us here but you know overall it looks pretty good so how does the rain chance break down in your area through the weekend for the bahamas 
We're dry. Belize City, an isolated morning shower along the coast is possible. For my friends in Jamaica, 20% chance today and tomorrow. I'm going to up it to a 30% chance on Sunday and monitor the situation. I think the rain's a little bit more concentrated in the Dominican Republic on Saturday, but again, it's not a completely dry forecast, so watch out for showers and even a rumble of thunder to develop in the afternoon hours. Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago, it's about the same scenario. Heaviest potential for excessive rain is today. Overall, your rain chance 40%, and then the rain chances do tail off for the weekend ahead, but still could be some isolated heavier downpours both on Saturday and Sunday. And then for Puerto Rico and the U.S. and the British Virgin Islands, it's about a 40% chance each and every day. Still some pockets of heavier rain, but it's not going to be a washout. I do want to highlight that. I don't expect it to be a full washout in that area. Remember, friends, you can find us through a lot of social media. Let me take myself off camera real quick. I want to make sure here I do. Okay, I have one more slide to show you guys, so don't go anywhere. Those are our social media platforms, but you guys know that as well. I want to go back real quick before we get out of here and look at the potential rainfall over the next five days. This would be the total rain across your area. So again, you know, I don't think the model is picking up on some of the heaviest rain that has already fallen in Trinidad and Tobago because when we query this, you know, it's picking up an inch or more in a couple of spots, but some of the reports I've seen have already put that much rain in portions of Trinidad already. And again, if you live in this area, drop it in the comment section below. Let me know how you're doing, especially if you've seen some flooding. We'd be curious how that's playing out. Barbados, about the same situation. It's an inch of rain there. St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada. It's a half inch on average, but there will be some locally higher amounts. And again, when I'm showing you one point, don't take that and say, that's exactly what I'm going to see. We kind of want to average out what the model is showing. Now, again, the model is showing heavier rain just north and east of Anguilla and Antigua and Barbuda, but we could see some pockets of heavier rain uh, here as well, even as far south as St. Kitts and Nevis. And then again, for portions of Puerto Rico and the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, it's a quarter to a half inch of rain. We get to an inch of rain towards Esperanza there in Culebra, and then from San Juan into interior sections. Again, another inch plus of rain could lead to some isolated flooding threats, so we'll monitor that. There's your bullseye of heavier rain over portions of Hispaniola. That's just some really solid rainfall totals from Lacay to Port-au-Prince to Barahona there, Santo Domingo, Santiago de los Cabreros, as I said, interior sections. Punta Cana might be slightly drier. There's a PGA Tour event going on there this weekend. I know that. So hopefully they'll be okay there. Obviously there's a lot of sport fishing going on as well. And being a native of Florida, I enjoy that as well. And then for my friends in Jamaica, we got some scattered showers for you. Notice the model does paint in a little bit more rain interior sections here. So Ocho Rios and Mandeville and Maypen, maybe a little bit better chance for some heavier rain than compared to Old Harbor and Kingston, Port Moore, Spanish Town, Port Antonio, with slightly drier conditions possible for Montego Bay and Negril. I think though in some of the higher trained areas just off of the coastline there on the western side of the island, including Savannah, Lamar, and just inland from there, we're going to get some spotty heavier rain. And again, uh, for uh, the uh, portions of Central America, it's relatively dry right along the immediate coast. There's a little bit of rain there. And then for my friends in the Bahamas, again, late next week towards days four and five, we might catch a couple of showers for Grand Bahama and Walker's Key. I'll be monitoring that. Friends, that's it. Thank you so much again for liking the video. If you've been looking for the forecast across the crib in the Bahamas. You're found your home here at Media Mundo. Thank you so much for subscribing. Got a question about the forecast? Drop it in the comment section below. Have a great rest of your Friday. Stay dry. I'll see you soon right here at Media Mundo.